Welcome to the University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy podcast. As we celebrate Pharmacist Month during October, we ask Stephen J. Cutler, Dean of the College of Pharmacy, to talk about the college's history and how we prepare our students to become future pharmacists and lead the profession into the future. The College of Pharmacy has a rich and long history, founded nearly 160 years ago by the LeConte brothers, Joseph and John, who petitioned the university to begin educating pharmacists. Of course, this was well in advance of any accreditation requirements uh, for how pharmacists were developed during that period of time. It's interesting that Joseph uh, served as the first chair of pharmacy at the University of South Carolina, while his brother John went out to California and eventually uh, served as the president of the University of California at Berkeley. Since those early days, the practice of pharmacy has changed dramatically, evolving from a time when most prescriptions were compounded extemporaneously. Uh, There were not large manufacturers of pharmaceuticals like we see today. Uh, So we would have mixing of liquids that would go into corked bottles. Uh, We would see the pharmacist grinding powders or grinding plant materials and putting those into envelopes and dispensing those to patients in that manner. And then if they were compounding pills, those were usually doughy pills, almost like it was like water and flour. But of course, these contain medications. Today's pharmacist is involved in a vast array of healthcare areas with multitudes of career opportunities, ranging from independent and retail pharmacies to hospital settings as a clinical pharmacist to roles in the pharmaceutical industry. And so we see with this degree, there's a variety of settings. I'm aware of a pharmacist who earned their degree in the mid-80s that served in various roles. That individual served in both independent and chain pharmacy. The pharmacist also served in in preparing radionuclear pharmacy, uh, pharmaceuticals that are used to uh, illuminate areas of the body so diagnosis can be more accurate. Uh, That individual also served uh, as a detailer for a major pharmaceutical company. Uh, The pharmacist also has served in a physician's office, making the prescription there before the patient left the physician's office. And that pharmacist, that same pharmacist, has also done compounding, where they're compounding for humans as well as animals. And in fact, one of the funny stories that this individual shared with me was preparing a, a medication for an elephant at Zoo Atlanta. The degree is probably the most versatile degree of any degree offered in higher education. Even the role of a retail or independent pharmacist has changed dramatically through the years. So a pharmacist in a a retail setting is providing immense care to the community. And when we talk about retail setting, we're referring to both an independent pharmacy uh, that's owned by an individual or a group of individuals or a chain of pharmacies. Uh, Those individuals play a critical and vital role in serving the community and providing them with the health care that they need. Uh, One of the other things that we see a lot in the community setting is the uh, delivery of vaccinations. Approximately 60 to 70 percent of all flu vaccinations in the United States are delivered by a pharmacist. Clinical pharmacists have also become vital to providing health care, a role with which the public may not be as familiar. We see individuals working within hospitals. They'll work as a staff pharmacist or as a clinical pharmacist, and those individuals play a vital role in the support of patients who are in that hospital. That's a position that is less seen by the community and the public. Uh, because one has to be in a hospital setting, obviously, to see those individuals. We also see them practicing as compounding pharmacists, both in that retail environment and also in a hospital environment. Uh, That practice of pharmacy can also include the preparation of sterile products. Any IV that that individual patient might be receiving was prepared by a pharmacist. And then when we get into other areas of pharmacists, that is uh, the education of physicians, as it relates to appropriate medication therapy, uh, we see pharmacists playing a key role there as well. So the degree is, is a very versatile one. 
And the pharmacist also plays a significant role in research because the pharmacists understand how to translate medications from the bench or the laboratory into the clinical environment for the patient. And so what we at the University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy do is we offer all our students the opportunity to work in some of the research laboratories that we have. It's not just in the event that they wish to work in a translational environment. We also want them to understand uh, 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 how drugs are designed, who developed them, who, how did they get developed. And with that, we think their understanding of what it is that they're practicing is much deeper and broader than that of a pharmacy student who might not have had that opportunity to work in a research environment. Pharmacists also have tremendous impact for the pharmaceutical industry, whether in support of physicians and other health care providers to ensure education around which medications might be best for a particular patient's needs. Pharmacists are also more involved in regulatory affairs. In fact, the demand for pharmacists in regulatory affairs is probably the highest it's ever been in the history. And a lot of this is based off the federal requirements that the FDA has put forward, the Food and Drug Administration, uh, in terms of how materials are prepared and in what are those environmental conditions in which that preparation occurs. And so in that particular case, the pharmacist might not be the one in the company making the product, but rather they're helping those within the company understand the regulations that are set forth by the FDA and ensuring that there's compliance at the highest level. Uh, the demand for that type of position is extremely high right now, and there's many, many opportunities uh, for a pharmacist to go into that area of, of, of practice. The importance of a pharmacist as a member of the healthcare team truly came to the forefront during the COVID-19 pandemic, and the University of South Carolina took on a major role in the ability to detect the spread of the disease through the development of saliva-based testing. Prior to the development of the saliva-based testing, their traditional method for diagnosing an upper respiratory tract infection was through the a nasal pharyngeal swab. Uh, anybody who's had either of those two understand the discomfort that comes with it, in particular the nasopharyngeal swab. Uh, it was a national effort in which we were at the forefront of that and developed saliva as a mechanism to test for upper respiratory tract infections. Today, when one is testing for an upper respiratory tract infection, nasal and nasopharyngeal swabs are still used, but so is saliva. And so this is a remarkable accomplishment by the University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy. The ability to provide vaccines during the pandemic also helped emphasize the importance of pharmacists in providing health care. Had it not been for their efforts, I think the outcome from COVID-19 might still be lingering with us today. So the impact of COVID-19 certainly changed the health care landscape. Uh, we were able to help affect change as it relates to an old tradition of diagnosing upper respiratory tract infections, and more importantly, pharmacists served at the front lines of protecting the communities in which they lived. In working to prepare students at the USC College of Pharmacy for their careers, the college offers more than 600 experiential opportunities to develop their skills not only in South Carolina, but across the U.S. as well. So with over 600 experiential opportunities, we can take an individual student, figure out what it is they wish to do in their careers, and tailor make their education for them. And it's not just in the experientials, but that's, that's a third of a pharmacy student's education. And so with that number, uh, we're able to provide a, a wonderful educational system to students enrolled in our, our programs. With respect to our faculty and the research that they do, We've got top-notch faculty uh, in our college. Uh, we have record amounts of extramural grant funding coming in, uh, record amounts of extramural grant awards. And the areas that our faculty are focused on in terms of research include, but not limited to, cancer, neuroscience, HIV, AIDS, natural products, and infectious diseases. When it comes to choosing a college to prepare for a future in pharmacy, the USC College of Pharmacy has many aspects to set it apart from other programs, including the Kennedy Pharmacy Innovation Center 
also known as KPIC, supported through a $30 million endowment by Bill and Lou Kennedy. And that affords us tremendous opportunities uh, to provide a deeper and broader understanding of the area of business and entrepreneurism within our students. They are trained on how to own their own business, not just a pharmacy, but the idea is obviously they are probably going to become independent pharmacists, but we offer ownership training. We offer their their development in uh, business, and they engage in business competition. Another unique program is the Walker Leadership Scholars Program, endowed by our alumna Donna Walker. And so with this program, we take high-capacity students, and we develop their leadership acumen. These individuals get to sit in the steering committees and board meetings of national organizations, and they can see how an organization operates. What does it take to lead a national organization? In addition to that, Donna Walker is keen that they understand advocacy. So she is very interested in ensuring that every one of the Walker Scholar students has an opportunity to interact with members of U.S. Congress, members of the South Carolina General Assembly, and other leaders in the United States, as well as in the state of South Carolina. It is a tremendous program. The Palmetto Poison Center is housed in the College of Pharmacy, providing 24-7 access 365 days a year to the only accredited poison center in South Carolina. The center handles more than 30,000 phone calls annually. Uh, It's estimated by the state of South Carolina that for every dollar spent on the Poison Control Center, $7 is saved by the state. The college has also developed an independent pharmacy track to ensure that students can learn about independent pharmacy much earlier in their education. They'll learn from the basics of how does one look at an independent pharmacy in terms of the inventory, how do you manage your inventory, how do you manage your payroll, how do you manage overall the business of an independent pharmacy. And the college works to ensure students will be successful in every aspect of becoming a strong practitioner. We have a very high pass rate, first time attempt on the uh, North American uh, licensure exam, as well as a high pass rate on the jurisprudence exam. Our residency match rate is one of the highest in the country. Student satisfaction survey numbers are exceptionally high for the University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy. Most students who finish um, say if they were to do it over again, they would choose this university and this college to earn their pharmacy degree. And our job placement remains very high. Another significant reason for the success of the college is its alumni who are actively involved in supporting the program through not only donations and gifts, but through engagement with the students. They will give of their time. They'll give of their expertise. They want to serve as mentors for students. They want to help develop those students into independent pharmacists. The interest that the alumni have in helping is phenomenal. While Dean Cutler can't predict the future of pharmacy, he does believe the role of the pharmacist will continue to grow. One only has to look at what happened with COVID and the impact it had on pharmacy and the practice of pharmacy to recognize that it's it's a changing landscape and it changed very rapidly during COVID-19. We saw a significant shift in how pharmacists deliver care to patients. And so what I would say in predicting what might happen in the next four or five years uh, with the practice of pharmacy, it's going to become much more uh, patient-centric. And I, I think that the future of pharmacy is very, very bright.